a viewer asked some questions about aligning the crystal filter in the SX62. Now, what I'm going to describe is actually a little more general than that. This is a procedure that will apply to practically all of the crystal filter circuits that use a single crystal. There also are other kinds of crystal circuits that I won't get into, lattices and other things, but this is basically the circuit that's used in the uh, SX62 and also in a number of other of the X line. Uh, there are over 50 uh, models of Halocrafters that use uh, crystal filters in one form or another. And of course there are Hammerland and other uh, literally uh, hundreds if not thousands of models that use crystal filters. This is a simplified uh, diagram of the circuit that was first put together in the 1940s or maybe even the, the 30s to use a crystal filter to get a very sharp response. Now, one of the reasons that crystals are used in the IF uh, alignment or the IF uh, selectivity of a receiver is that you can get extremely good selectivity. This gives you an idea of the kind of sharp skirts that you can get with a crystal. We'll talk about this dotted line here in a, a little later after we've gone through the uh, circuit above. But for very little insertion loss, you see often less than 3 dB of insertion loss, you can get a very sharp uh, skirt. That's an advantage, but it produces some problems when you try to align a receiver because this is so narrow that you have to have a very stable frequency source and also a frequency source that can be set to a very precise frequency. Generally, uh, I would recommend these days that if you don't have a frequency counter, that you not try to adjust your crystal filter, because if you can't set this to exactly the uh, frequency and read it, and then be able to repeat it, for reasons that I'll get into a little later, you need to be able to set the frequency to the center of the crystal, which is easy enough. But then you need to be able to read that exact frequency off of your generator or a frequency counter and use that throughout the IF alignment process. Otherwise, the crystal will wind up aligned to one frequency, which cannot be changed. It's a, it's a property of the physical structure of the crystal. And your IF will wind up aligned to a different frequency. And instead of getting a nice sharp uh, skirt, you'll get uh, poor reception. So uh, let's talk first about the, uh, the Halocrafters itself and then we'll return to the circuit. Here are the alignment uh, instructions for the IF or intermediate frequency. The part we're going to be referring to is this step and this step. I will call this step the broad crystal adjustment and this step the sharp crystal adjustment. Now, there are a series of coils and capacitors in the SX62 that are relevant. Slug S10, we'll look at on the schematic in a little bit, and you'll see where that is. There also are a couple of capacitors. One is C57, and then later when you get down to the sharp uh, position, you're dealing with C61. Once again, we'll look at those on the schematic, but the important point to realize is that you first align the crystal in its broad position and then in its sharp position. If you don't get a good alignment on the uh, uh, broad position, you will find it's very, very difficult to, to do this in the uh, sharp position. So let's take a look at the schematic. Here is the schematic of the SX62. This is the 6SK7. Here is the crystal itself, and you'll notice that it has a coil 
and some capacitors that uh, are that surround it that need to be adjusted. The uh, slug that we talked about earlier is the slug in this section here. Down here is the uh, switch that selects the particular selectivity. In the SX62 you have uh, a number, I think it's a total of six different selectivities. You have a broad, uh, a medium, and a narrow without the crystal, and then you have a broad and narrow with the crystal. Generally the narrow or sharp crystal position is only used for CW. So if you don't get that exactly right and all you're listening to is single sideband and uh, AM, then you don't really need to worry about that too much. It becomes really important if you use an SX62 to receive uh, CW or code. Very few people do that. This receiver was not designed as a CW receiver. It can do it, but there are lots better ways, lots better receivers for that. So while we'll talk about that a little bit, we aren't going to go into a lot of detail. Let me now kind of zoom in on this area up here so you can get a feel for the actual crystal circuit. Here is the, uh, once again, the 6SK7. The crystal, the capacitors, some of which are adjustable and some of which are not. This one is not adjustable. This coil is adjustable. Notice that the coil is tapped at the center. Effectively, the center of this coil is at ground. Now, it's not at DC ground, but it's uh, through a capacitor to ground, so it's at AC ground, and we'll see why that's important here in a minute. So what we're going to be trying to do is to talk about what happens when you adjust this slug and these capacitors. In order to do that, we first have to look at the characteristics of crystals. This is an equivalent circuit of a crystal. There is a, a uh, and understand this is only a representation. These things don't actually exist. There's no real coil in a uh, uh, crystal. But the motion of the crystal, that is a quartz crystal, is represented by an equivalent motional inductance, and that's what L sub M means. There also is an equivalent motional capacitance and an equivalent motional resistance. Now, the resistance is often called the ESR, or equivalent series resistance, and if you've uh, tested capacitors with an ESR meter, you're familiar with this, uh, this term. It means the equivalent resistor, it's not, there's not actually a physical resistor in the case. There also is uh, stray capacitance due to the case itself and the crystal, and that is designated as C0. This, once again, is inherent in the crystal. Now, the reason that it's important to look at this is a crystal actually has two resonant frequencies. One is the series resonant frequency. That is when the motional capacitance and the motional inductance cancel each other, or are equal to each other, that is the impedance of this capacitor and the impedance of this inductor are equal. At that resonant point, this forms a series resonant circuit, and essentially these two components disappear, and it passes maximum signal through, and the only thing uh, reducing the signal is the equivalent series resistance. So very low attenuation at the series frequency. But there is a second frequency due to this capacitor interacting or, or in parallel with this inductor. And at that frequency, called the parallel uh, resonant frequency, the, this circuit actually becomes a high impedance. So at that frequency, you get uh, a significant drop in the uh, uh, the uh, signal through. So at the series frequency, just the ESR. At the parallel frequency, very high attenuation. 
Here is a typical response curve for a crystal. In this case, this is a, a 10 megahertz crystal that is being used with a generator that has about a 12 and a half ohm in, uh, internal resistance and it's operated into a load of approximately the same amount. Generally, this is you want to keep these balanced. As you see, at the series resonant frequency, there is a peak. In other words, very little attenuation. Now understand, a crystal filter always attenuates. So there's always a little bit of loss when you put the receiver in the crystal position. But at this second frequency, called the parallel resonant frequency of the crystal, you get a tremendous attenuation. That is, tremendous relative to the small attenuation at the series frequency, or even the attenuation uh, out here in the uh, uh, outside the, the crystal's frequency. Now, what you are doing when you adjust a crystal filter is, in essence, you're controlling this uh, null. That is, what you're trying to do is to reduce this null or to move it to a, a more appropriate place so that you get really sharp uh, attenuation away from the central frequency. And uh, in a minute we'll look at a circuit for doing that that was invented, I believe, in the 1930s that we looked at at the very beginning, in which an attempt is made to, in essence, cancel out or move this uh, null. This is the circuit that I was talking about that basically uses, in addition to the, the generator and the load and the crystal, it also inserts a transformer and the, the secondary of that transformer is connected through a variable capacitor essentially across the crystal. When I say essentially, this point is grounded and this point is connected uh, here. This ground is the generator impedance away from this point. So in essence, this side of the capacitor is the generator impedance away from this point. And in effect, what it does is it tries to cancel C0. To understand how that uh, happens, I have redrawn the circuit as follows. What I have done is drawn this transformer, but if you put a dot at this end, showing that's the in-phase position for the primary, then the dot on the secondary goes at this end. In other words, this signal is 180 degrees out of phase with this signal. Well, this signal is on this end of this capacitor. So, in essence, what you are doing is you are putting a, uh, an anti-capacitor, or a capacitor 180 degrees out of phase, across C0. In doing that, you are canceling some of the effect of C0. And that is what allows you to affect this null. Remember, this null is due to the uh, capacitance of the, uh, the, the parallel capacitance of the crystal. Okay, now you may ask yourself, well, why in the world go into all of this theory just to explain how to align an IF uh, uh, crystal filter? The answer is that if you understand the action of this capacitor called the phasing capacitor, and of the other adjustable capacitors. And uh, by the way, this is the slug that is used in the uh, transformer. There often, depending on the particular receiver you've got, there will be other adjustable capacitors and maybe even other adjustable 
uh, inductors, this is about as simple as it gets, and it's fairly close to the circuit that is used in the uh, in the SX62. Let's take a look at that again. You notice that here is the crystal filter, and then down here you notice that this capacitor is called the IF Sharp Trimmer. You may not be able to read that, but if you download the manual from the BAMA website, you will probably be able to read that, and that's what that capacitor is. So, that is this capacitor. It's the trimmer capacitor for the phasing control. Now there also is a phasing control that allows you to move this null. You notice that depending on how you have that capacitor set, this null could be out here, it could be here, it can even be on this side if you adjust the uh, capacitance uh, to, a, to a very large value, it can actually uh, cause the null to appear on the downside of the, uh, of the crystal's response. So now let's look at the actual alignment procedure. Here is the actual alignment procedure for the SX62. And I encourage you to, if you are well, want to follow along on this, to uh, go ahead and download the manual. If you have a different receiver, you will find your alignment procedure will vary from this. But the basic principles are the same, and that's the reason why that I have gone into some of the theory of what it is you're actually adjusting. So, in the SX62, and <laughs> I did this procedure when I aligned my SX62, but you may recall if you watch those videos that I, I ran into one of those uh, problems that a, a person like me who didn't have a lot of experience with YouTube runs into. I thought I had downloaded the files from my camera to my computer. Uh, I then deleted them from the camera, and when I went to go make the video, I discovered they weren't anywhere to be found on the computer. So I still don't know what happened there, but I have learned don't delete your camera de uh, files until you have made the video. So anyway, uh, the first thing you do is you set the se uh, selectivity control to crystal broad. Then you... Uh, insert a, an alignment tool into the slug, uh, S10, and you begin rocking it back and forth, that is adjusting the slug, while you also rock the generator. And by rock the generator, what we mean is it's like rocking a cradle. You're going from one side of the frequency to the other side, up and down, up and down, up and down. And you're constantly rocking the generator, watching the response of the circuit as you adjust slug S10. And you begin below the frequency. In this case, it's a 455 kilohertz crystal. So you start below 455. And you sweep the generator gently up and adjust S10. Then you come down you go back up again and adjust S10 again and so on. As it said, as it says, the correct setting of the slug S10 is in the center of the dip you observed. Now the dip that you are seeing is this dip. In other words, in a way, if you think about it, you're seeing a peak a dip, and another peak, although this peak is very is nowhere near as uh, uh, high as this peak, but you're, you're basically going up, down, and back up. So as you sweep the generator through from below the crystal frequency to above the crystal frequency, you'll be constantly getting this pattern on your meter. What you're trying to do 
is to set the slug to the center of the observed dip. That is this point. In other words, you're trying to set the generator to the parallel resonant frequency. Then, the, uh, you adjust the phasing trimmer. Now the phasing trimmer is the adjustable part of this capacitor which once again is 180 degrees out of phase with the capacitance inside the crystal. So uh, that sets the response to look something like this. Then you switch the selectivity control to the crystal sharp position. And once again, I encourage you, if you don't have a frequency generator, don't uh, adjust this unless your uh, radio is so far out that it's just useless without it. The reason is, here you are adjusting around a very narrow frequency range. And I'll come back to why, that's, why it's important you be able to know the generator frequency. So, then you use trimmer C61 and you adjust it to near minimum capacity. Then, once again while rocking the signal generator, you continue to increase C61. What you are in effect doing is placing this null at a place that contributes to the selectivity of the uh, filter without uh, cutting the gain too much. Now, I will tell you that in my experience with the SX-62, when you turn it from the broad to the sharp position, you are going to get some loss of signal. That's normal. However, if you properly adjust C61, starting at its minimum capacity, and you have to you want to do that to begin with, so that you're going from less capacity to more capacity, and then slowly increase the capacity while rocking and adjust for maximum output. What you are doing is making sure that this null isn't right in the middle of the peak. In other words, to one side or the other. That's the way you adjust these two. Then, you may notice it says tune the signal generator to exact crystal frequency. Set the selectivity control at crystal broad and note the drop and output meter reading. Now you switch to crystal medium and adjust C60 from near minimum capacity, slowly increase it while rocking the generator. The, what you're trying to accomplish is to balance the, the crystal in its three selectivity positions so that they all uh, operate around this same frequency. Now, if one of those capacitors is not properly adjusted, you'll either be, this, this null will either be right in the middle of your frequency, thereby reducing the overall uh, sensitivity of the receiver, or it'll be so far out here that it won't do any real good. In other words, it won't be helping to improve this uh, skirt uh, position. Now, when you have the capacitor at minimum, it's way out here. As you pull it in, you keep watching to make sure that in the uh, medium and sharp positions, none of the, you're not substantially affecting the output of the receiver. Now you may see why it's important 
to know the right frequency. The reason is you're going to have to reset the generator to that frequency when you adjust all of these other IF coils. In other words, the best procedure is to start by adjusting the crystal frequency or by adjusting the generator to the crystal frequency, getting the broad, medium, and sharp positions to, uh, to operate uh, around the same frequency, and then by carefully noting that frequency, use that frequency for the other, for the rest of the IF alignment. Don't necessarily use 455 kilohertz. The reason is that your crystal will be slightly off. All of them are. So you may have one that is 455.003 and the next SX62 you work on might be 454.997. Whatever the frequency of that crystal is, once you get it properly adjusted, that's the frequency you want to use to adjust all of these other transformers. Now, I will have to admit that I actually don't use this alignment procedure because it frankly is fr rather frustrating. You can do it, but what I do is I use a sweep generator. Let me show you what, what one of those might look like. Over there is a WaveTech sweep generator, which is the one I actually used on the SX62A that, or the, the pair of them that I recently renovated. There is also a, a similar generator made by WaveTech, the, uh, the 1080, which is shown there, that also is useful. Whatever you do, you really need a, a generator, a marker generator, that is very carefully calibrated. Now, I can do that because I have a, an HP synthesized generator. That generator can generate 455 kilohertz very accurately and I can use that to mark the, uh, the spots. I also have a Rigol generator that's behind the lamp there, uh, right here, that can also be used. It goes to 25 megahertz. Any good digital generator that will cover 455 kilohertz, plus or minus uh, uh, 10 or 20 kilohertz, is adequate as the marker. But it is important that whether you use the procedure set out in the Halicrafters uh, manual or whether you use a sweep alignment, as I did, you need an accurate marker generator so that you're using the actual crystal frequency, not the arbitrary number of 455 kilohertz. Once again, I hope I haven't beaten a dead horse here, but since I had lost the original alignment instructions or alignment videos, from the SX62, I felt like that since this is really the hard part, there are lots of alignment videos on YouTube about other uh, alignments, uh, RF alignment, IF alignment, etc. But the one thing that separates a communications receiver with a crystal filter from all those other alignments is this alignment of the crystal and then using that frequency throughout the rest of the IF alignment. I hope you got something out of this video. I hope I've also explained why it's necessary to have so many adjustments on the uh, crystal filter. There is a website, uh, a, uh, a gentleman, it's called DEV as in Dog Echo Victor, TTY as in uh, Teletype Young, uh, S zero, D-E-V-T-T-Y-S zero, who goes into a lot more detail on the characteristics of crystals, and I, I regard him as my expert. I'm certainly not. So uh, at any rate, I hope you've gotten something out of this and enjoyed it, and we'll stay tuned for some 
future videos, but I probably won't come back to this one uh, ever again. <laughs> Have a nice day.